Saturday morning. And our weekends typically are the beginning of our weeks because we get rain now. It's just a black hole. Yeah. It's a perpetual singularity that just repeats itself. Mm -hmm. We are on the road. We have to go pick up a disc ripper. While well, we're not. Well, a friend of ours, Jeff, is borrowing it. And we are hoping, this is, a, this is nice air, low humidity and lots of sun. So we're hoping by this afternoon we might be able to start to finish beans. Yep. We have 70 acres left, I believe, right? 80. It has been kind of a process because we keep getting stopped. Um, but we have all the wheat that we scheduled to get in, but I think we've had to change the plans and we want to put in another... 78 acres. 70 acres, 78 acres. You'll probably explain this in your videos, but we're finding that... Wheat is good. Wheat is really good. And we've had to walk away from some wheat fields in the last couple of years, and we're really seeing it in our bean yields. Um, in after corn. In corn, after a few years, it just it's just a cumulative effect. Oh, they're doing corn silage. Hmm. Anyways, we're hoping to do that and get the wheat in before this next system rolls in Monday night. Nice of us to let you fix our equipment, eh? Yeah. It's like rent. Yeah. <laughs> Z, what are you doing? Yeah. Leave him alone. You're doing your barking at me before. Well, she does that. Close? Yeah. That's the ticket. Just beat the nut up a little more. Oh, uh, yeah. I probably have something like that around, to be honest. Should just slide out. Jammed up. Stuck on the sh shaft. Do you want like a pry bar or something? Maybe that one. There you go. It's just a seal holding on, I guess. Well. Huh? Bore the shaft. Yeah. And she's not pretty, eh? No. I don't think I caught it very soon. <laughs> to be honest. Try some on this side. Grease fitting worked. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll be able to get the pullers on to pull that cone or not. Should be able to. Oh, yeah.
I know you guys can't smell this, but rest assured, it reeks. So I'm gonna go clean this up. The boys got that bearing off and the shaft is screwed. So we had to order a new one. And it's not until Tuesday and it's supposed to rain Monday. So Jeff's gonna use it as is and uh, see how it works without that disc. I realize I haven't really been in the fields too, too much with you guys. We have been in the fields. Uh, so I haven't showed you after that corn silage video, I never really did show you how I fixed that bag. Uh, it was not the way I wanted to fix it, but kind of we just made do. So what I ended up doing is I pulled out enough feed that I could get the flap down and kind of flattened here. I could not get a board. What I wanted to do was squish them like I do at the front with two two by fours. I just couldn't get enough. I couldn't get the board underneath enough on the bottom with, and I didn't want to take too much more out to, for fear of wrecking the bag or wrecking that fold that's already there. So what I did is I just had enough that I could get that tight and then I put two straw bales on top of it just to prevent any air from getting in. So I'm hoping that will help. Your little pet project. Is that? Yeah, like a good 404. Yeah. Does it? I think it's not to chewed a hole through the tire. No. Yeah. Right through it? Yeah. Do you want to roll it back over? I can take a look at it. Yeah. Are we going to eat? Yeah. Nice. Looking at my pumpkins. We got one that's trying to survive, but everything else is frozen. Everything else froze. They're so pretty. Should probably get them off the grass. Yeah, let's bring the little ones into the house for like a decoration. We are going to check our soybeans to see if they're ready. What was only calling for 15 mils of rain tomorrow night is now like 25 mils of rain. Sunday night or Monday night. Not Monday night. night. Oh, it's only Saturday. Right. Yes. Right. How do they seem? The ground's soft. Like the plant material is fine. They look sad.
in the stone trap? Yeah. There was one? Yeah. So it's three o'clock and we figured we wouldn't be at Beans at least till now or even maybe later. Uh, moisture's hugging in right around 14.5 to 15. So there's a bit of a breeze and it's sunny. So we're hoping if anything, it'll just drop from that. So we are gonna just keep on going. Uh, these again are identity preserved beans. So we've had to keep them separate. You only have a very tight window every day to take these off because as the dampness and the dew uh, settles in for the day, uh, it, the combine can, it's called mud tanging. So it can, that dust that's on the combine, if it, if it brings in some of that moisture, it will, the mud will start sticking to the beans and uh, then we get docked for pick. Here's Mark with the buggy. We were transferring some wheat yesterday, so I'm just making sure these wagons are completely emptied before we put IP soybeans. Sometimes it's good to let these guys jiggle down the road and then we open the doors and everything comes out. Little little trick. I totally just tried to videotape that. We just tiled this farm and it is like cruising on a very choppy lake. The camera fell. I swore. I have to take the swearing out because I will get demonetized. I'll wait for some smooth spots and try to take some more filming.
we just nicely opened up the field. This is kind of the part where I, I just have to judge how many rounds he can go with the combine before he needs me again. When he first starts out in the straight runs, I guess you could say, uh, he does it kind of in lands. When you're thinking of lands, it's basically um, he goes straight up the middle of the field and so then you'd have like a land on this side of the combine and a land on this side of the combine and you go um, from side to side taking both sides of the lands and when he does that uh, then I can catch him always. The, the auger on the combine is only on their, its left side if you're looking at it from behind uh, so I can only pick him up on one side so uh, he always, I always have to catch him when his, his auger is on the open side, if that makes any sense. He will keep doing that until the lands become too far apart and then he'll just work at um, both sides of that land. We have sign language, not always appropriate for YouTube, uh, but the, the main sign language is auger out means I pick him up, auger in means he's done, go away, leave me alone. And uh, with soybeans it takes a long time, like even on good yielding soybeans it takes a long time to fill the combine, a long time to fill the buggy, and then there's so there's quite a bit more sitting around. So I do a lot more of this. So I try to listen to podcasts and uh, Audible, like audiobooks. Oh my goodness, we have stopped so many times because we tiled it, and when you tile, you you really work up a bunch of stones. Uh, the spring was so crappy that we didn't we didn't get any of the stones picked so what we do is we roll the stones so we take a big roller and we roll them so it kind of gets pushed back into the kind of moist soil when we go to cut clip soybeans uh, if if those rocks didn't get pushed all the way down they they pick up and they can cause they can kill literally kill your combine I think Mark actually I think his last vlog had all about his adventures with stone picking with a combine Combines aren't meant to stone pick, just FYI. I got my PTO around 1160 there. PTO on! And then here's my number one remote. I'm just gonna open that up until I get to the number two on the slide. Right there. There she go. So if I want to move my spout, and that's the number two remote, and it just moves the spout left and right. It's just sweet. That's new on this buggy. I never had that before, so that's really nice. If you don't line up perfectly, I can just use this remote. And number three is for my auger to go in and out. So if I'm traveling or opening up a field near trees, that goes in. The first question I get asked is why do I feel the front one and not the back one, especially when you could just keep like driving forward, which which in theory is easier. Uh, we start with the front one in case there's ever any problems and we can only fill one wagon. We'd rather it be the front one because we can unhook the back one, leave the back one, do whatever we have to do, unload. Um, but when we fill the back one first and something happens and the back one's full and the front one's not we'd have to do a lot more we don't like taking a set of two with an empty one in in the front we'd have to unhook the wagon get it out of the way drop it hook up to the full one get it out of the way so we've just always filled the front wagon first no matter what uh, another question I get asked is why do I fill from the front to the back when I have to back up uh, I never used to I always just went forward um, but when they are lined up like this and I got to go backwards anyway it just gets me 
it's literally just practice because I do need a lot of practice backing up wagons and buggies and trailers and all those things. So I take any small opportunity I can to do that. And the other reason is Brett actually showed me that he finds sometimes with some of these spouts, they just fill a little nicer, like in nicer piles when you go backwards. I don't know if there's science behind that, but I do find when you're going forward, the grain kind of like slides a little bit more all over the place. And I find when you go backwards, it just kind of piles it nicer. I don't know, that might just be me. What do you guys do? How do you guys fill wagons? Uh, any of my buggy drivers out there, let me know, comment below. How do you fill your wagons? I go from, we go front wagon to back wagon and I like to go backwards if I can. <laughs>